The analysis of Tamerlane's roots in the North Caucasus shows that his actions were not isolated strikes but a deliberate and systematic system of conquering the entire region. Thus, during his first campaign he ravaged the Circassian area, northwestern Caucasus, during his second one he ravaged Buraburdi and Burakan country, territory of Piatagori and today's Karakachur Kesia, then his third campaign attacked Taz and Kula area, territory of kabardino balkaria and during his fourth one he robbed Pulat, North Ossetia. After another rest in Piatagori, Timur struck his fifth attack on the Simsim -Sim country. The Simsim -Sim region is the territory of present-day Chechnya and Gashishia. The Simsim -Sim province had its own ruler, who was called Georgian. Certain parts of the country were divided into feudal states headed by vassals. Timur's army captured the flat part of the region in one fell swoop. However, unwilling to submit to the conqueror, part of the population of Simsim -Sim retreated and occupied in the mountains, impregnable places, to continue the fight against Timur. The struggle of the Simsim -Sim peoples against Amir Timur. According to other reports, the formidable Tamerlane's army moved into the mountains of present-day Chechnya and Gashishia upstream of the Argun and the Suinja. For this purpose it crossed to the right bank of the river Suinja, near where Grozny is today. It was here, according to tradition, that a bridge across the Suinja was built by Tamerlane, and the crossing of the river at that spot was named Kuparaksak Timur, i.e., the bridge of the lane Timur. It was on the approaches to the foothills of Chechen-Ingashishia that Simsim's main army was defeated. According to the Persian chroniclers Shami and Yazdi, it was after this that Garkin's son Muhammad, having tied with a belt of obedience and piousness, joined his ilk to Timur's side, and, having been honored with the kiss of a carpet, he became a servant of the court. After the defeat on the plain, not all, the people of Simsim -Sim did so. Unlike Muhammad, another group of inhabitants of these places retreated and, taking refuge in the mountains, withdrew to such inaccessible places, where even a footman could scarcely reach. The surviving plainsmen of Simsim -Sim joined the Highlanders to continue their fight against the conquerors. After Tamerlane's seizure of the plains, the war for the local population turned from a war of the ruling elite into a guerrilla people's war. This war was widespread, which is eloquently demonstrated by the fact that Tamerlane's court historians did not consider it necessary to describe the fate of the ruler of Gyurkin, but focused all their attention on Tamerlane's actions in the mountains. The strength of resistance of Vainax in the mountains is shown by the fact that historiographers found it necessary to emphasize that Tamerlane personally set out against them. Passing on to a further account of events, they report that, in addition to all the difficulties which Tamerlane faced from the Highlanders, there were many impregnable places fortified by towers and fortresses which Tamerlane conquered and destroyed, while their defenders were thrown down into the abyss. Tamerlane destroyed many castles in the Chechen Ingush Mountains. It recalls the historical legend of the Bird's Wing Tower, which says that there is the mountain Bashan Kale, whose summits rest against the clouds, and which makes one's hat fall off one's head. On one side of it there is a sheer cliff. The local rich men built a castle on the impregnable peak, several stone towers beyond the reach of even a single arrow. Tamerlane's army decided to storm the castle and named it Ganat Kala, Ganat means wing in their language. The actions of Timur's troops in the mountains. In separate detachments, Timur's army moved in the gorges and along the mountains from west to east, capturing and destroying castles and fortresses along the way, mostly in the mountainous parts of the present-day Nazrin, Sunshensky, Ochkomartin and Shadoy districts. Then, after hostilities in the Argun Gorge, they turned northeast, penetrating deep into the forest zone of today's Vadino and Natsayurtovsky districts to the Andy mountain range. The following fact testifies to the conqueror's bitterness in response to the Highlanders' resistance, they tied up the inhabitants of that area and threw them down the mountain, on Tamerlane's orders. The conquerors advance into the territory of Auk. Descending from the Simsim Mountains to the plains, Timur directed his army to raid the foothill area of Auk, inhabited by Chechens of Auk, the king, because the Cumic lowlands can be reached only by the Auk Mountains. A preliminary survey of the Auk area confirmed epigraphic material of the 16th century. 
Archaeological finds testify that Vainaks lived in the Aka area in the early medievality. The Turkic-speaking peoples of Dagestan call Chechen Zakians and their territory Ak, with the suffix er, lar, added to the plural, Akar. Incidentally, almost all Aki villages end with the word Ak. The invader invaded from the Cumic lowlands to the eastern outskirts of Chechnya, seized the town of Almak, with its seven to eight thousand houses, and displaced local residents to the plains, despite strong resistance by the highlanders. The route of the raid unit sent by Timur most likely ran upstream along the rivers Yumansu, Yeriksu and Aktash, then along the Salatavia and Indian Khoisu upstream to Averia. The army brought back from there much booty, cows and food. Apparently, this was the task of Amir Timur. From there, the detachment returned to its convoy in Piatagori. The legend, Tamerlane and the Mirror, complements the information of the sources. It lists wonderful horses, various fabrics, vessels, weapons, helmets, shields, armor, spears, bows, swords, etc. seized by them. All this beckoned the eyes of the conqueror and his henchmen. Amir Timur understood that his empire created by the sword will exist only as long as he is able to make his victorious campaigns bringing booty in the interests of the nobility. The Consequences of Tamerlane's Invasion of Chechnya and Gashishia The development of Chechnya and Gashishia followed the path of its neighbors though it had its peculiarities. Tamerlane's invasion disturbed the normal course of social development and left harsh consequences. Chechen Ingush economic development was several centuries backward. It was not by chance that Chechen and Ingush folklore regarded Tamerlane as a purely negative character. Devastation and robbery of towns and villages led to a decline in their trade and craft production. The population sharply decreased. The Nak ethnos was disintegrating into separate societies, and the Simsim country into small lands, represented by the Chechen Ingush of the 16th to 17th centuries. The Caucasian steppe, on the contrary, had lost much of its sedentary farmers, and its territory was controlled by nomads. Nevertheless, subjugation was out of the question, as Tamerlane had not conquered the North Caucasus, but limited himself to its ravages, after which he left the area. Golden Horde had suffered three mighty defeats in a relatively short period of time, 1380, 1391 and 1395, after which it could not restore its might. As a result of the liberation struggles of the conquered peoples, the Horde disintegrated into small Ulus, principalities, at the beginning of the 15th century.